Hi, here with Manish Gupta, who's the CEO and founder of Shift Left. So welcome. Hello, Manish. It's lovely to meet you. And yes, congratulations you on your win. Fresh out of the gate, only announced on Monday. So and here you are at RSA. Super excited. Thank you so much. Uh, thank You're welcome. you to your readers and your panel for selecting us. Uh, yeah, we couldn't be prouder for where we are. Brilliant. Well, it's a nice way to kick off the RSA week because oh, it's yeah. always a tough one. <laughs> always a tough one. And um, we were chatting just before uh, the start of this about, you know, where you come from and um, the success you've experienced with FireEye, the stuff that you've done at Cisco and McAfee. So RSA is in your blood now as a, yes. as a conference and a place to be. Um could you perhaps give us a brief description of Shift Left? Because as we were talking about earlier, you know, Shift Left is not just your company. It's also a way of thinking. It's a, it's, it's a position, a mission within the IT community now. So tell us a little bit about where the idea came from and what it's all about. Yeah, indeed. And um, I think I'll, let me take you a little bit back to my journey through Fire, ISIS, Co and McAfee because mm. that's very relevant. You know, so across those three companies, about 16 years I spent detecting viruses, worms, nation state attackers, uh, modern malware at FireEye. And it was circa 2015, right, when I was talking to customers and everyone was telling me that they're developing more software and they're developing it ever faster. Mm -hmm. And what's more is people are increasingly, companies are increasingly deploying that software in the hybrid cloud, AWS, mm -hmm. Azure. And uh, when I looked at that, it's like everything around us is being driven by software, whether it is web applications, whether it is mobile applications, whether it is self-driven cars. And having been in security for about 15, 16 years, I also knew that there is no way we are going to get better at security if we continue to react to threats. Hmm. Why? Because we see way too many of them every new day, every day, right? So about 350,000 pieces of new malware are seen every day. Right? And so if you're reacting to those threats, you're allowing the bad guy to shoot first, and then you're trying to react. And so that's when I felt that if we are going to get better at security, we have to fundamentally shift security left, which means that we have to allow, we have to enable developers to develop secure software more securely. And uh, as I came to the realization, the next step was, okay, well, now that I believe that that's what needs to happen, what are the solutions that are available in the marketplace? And uh, what I found was that all the solutions that customers were using were about 15 years to 20 years old. And even though software development has changed so significantly in the last five years, using all of these legacy sort of code analysis solutions was creating a lot of friction. Hmm. They are very slow. Uh, they're very inaccurate. And so the whole process of um, running code analysis, looking at the scans, prioritizing them takes too long. Mm. As a result, many companies, what they do is they're developing perhaps and releasing on a daily or a weekly basis, but they're only doing code analysis once a month because it's so time consuming. Mm. Uh, and so that is what gave rise to Shift Left um, to, for the first time, come up with a code analysis solution that is built for the modern software development lifecycle, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so, you know, in 2016, when we started the company, we called it Shift Left, which back then was a very rarely mm -hmm. used or understood term. Um, and yeah, we are very excited to sort of fast forward in 2020, and it is like a verb being used by many customers across the globe. I constantly run into even larger companies who are saying, Manish, we have an internal project called Shift Left. <laughs> so it's great. Yes, very much ahead of the curve there, very much ahead of the curve. So that was obviously your focus, and you've come from, um, you know, I mean, it, it it's 
obviously been inspired by your conversations, many, many, many conversations when you were working at FireEye and obviously taking that from an idea to a reality. And, you know, obviously we like to think that the accolade that you received is a reflection of what you've achieved because it's not just about um, having a great conceptual product, but it's also how, it, how you're taking that to market and making that um, a, a difference. So yeah. for software development teams who have embraced agile development, you now also have a platform that allows them to do that um, securely, but without the hindrance, perhaps, of some of the lag that they were experiencing before. Yeah, indeed. Um, you know, uh, ideas are dime a dozen. Mm. Um, I think it's the ex- execution uh, that's super important for a startup to get to where we've gotten to. Uh, and that really comes, uh, you know, execution is, of course, dependent heavily on the team. Mm. So we're very, very fortunate to have put together the team that we've put together um, brilliant minds, very passionate, very committed to this very notion of how we're going to shift security left. Mm. And yes, to your point, we now have a platform. Um, customer, We are now helping customers do core analysis as far left in the development cycle as possible, which is the modern pull request. Mm. Pull request um, through platforms like GitHub, GitLab are becoming the way for developing software. And uh, every time a developer makes a change, he's doing a pull request. And if we, as we are inserting code analysis at that very stage, mm. we are giving that developer, while the entire context of the change that he made is fresh in his mind, we are telling him, here are the things that are wrong. Here are the vulnerabilities that your change is causing, right? And f- please fix them. Mm. And... Uh, so while that is one part, we also are cognizant that you know we, security also has a very important role uh, to play. They are the ones who have a company-wide view of what mm. security is, is desirable, how much risk they're willing to take, and perhaps what is happening in the macro environment in terms of threat landscape. Mm. So security now, for the first time, can institute policies, define policies to say, hey, any time a pull request creates more than, for example, three critical vulnerabilities, we need to fail the pull request, mm. right? And so this allows security to provide automated feedback, again, as soon as the pull request is done. Mm. Um, and when you compare this process with how legacy application security gets done, we find that this our shift left way is about six times more efficient for customers, mm. right? And that is really the future is uh, we have to, you know, we have to reduce the operational complexity around AppSec because that is when both developers and application security teams are going to want to do it, Mm. right? Because if it remains as cumbersome as it is today, you know, for most companies, it'll be an afterthought. It'll be a check in the box. Mm. Mm. And, you know, from your perspective, you talk about execution. Um, what what do you see as some of the challenges that you've faced in, in the shift left journey so far? Yeah, so what we are doing is hard. Mm. Um, you know, trying to understand a piece of software because software is written in multiple languages. Mm-hmm. Um, and each language is, is like English. Mm. And so its grammar is different. Its syntax is different. Uh, and uh, so that is one of the harder parts is mm. to continue to support additional programming languages with the level of accuracy that we demand. Mm. Uh, because we don't want to compromise on just saying, hey, we support this language, but give crappy results to our developers, because that is a sure, short way of making sure they don't use the product. Mm. Uh, so that is uh, uh, sort of the, the, has been the hardest part. And that in turn means, you know, if just sort of hiring the brightest minds who can help mm. address this problem, right? Um, so I think the two go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that is the very nature of a startup. You believe passionately mm-hmm. about solving a particular problem. And uh, I like to believe the harder it is, the better it is, because it creates a protective mode mm. around us so that fewer companies out there will, will can compete with mm. the you know, with the product solution that we've developed. So today, for example, our code analysis is 40 times faster than anyone else. We can scan about a quarter of a million lines of code in 28 seconds on average. Um, We are about three times more accurate than anyone else. 
And from a workflow perspective, we are integrating this uh, uh, code analysis at the pull request and saving, you know, the operational costs that I talked about. Mm. And those are um, sort of hard to achieve. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, very proud uh, of uh, the team and uh, having gotten here. Good. And you guys are based out of Colorado, is that right? No, we are based out of uh, Santa Clara. Our oh, headquarters okay. are in Santa Clara, but we have a very distributed team. Ah, okay. Uh, we have an office in Berlin. Great. Um, yeah, um, and many, many people just around the globe. Wonderful. So you're feeling very international. Yes, is- already. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good, you know, embracing the global opportunity because, you know, COVID is being created everywhere. Yeah, indeed. And also, I think uh, I like to say that uh, whilst uh, Silicon Valley has been an important um, hotbed of innovation, mm. um, we don't have the monopoly on talent. Right. Uh, there are smart ev- engineers everywhere around the world. And uh, through platforms like GitHub, uh, for the first time, you can you can create a team that is as international as we are and yet be able to create a cohesive team that mm-hmm. is working together. Mm. Um, you know, five years ago, this really wasn't as feasible as it is today. Mm. So that's helping entrepreneurs like yourself to to find the talent and not necessarily have to pull them all into one location. Indeed. Which is amazing. And what are, what are you most proud of over your journey so far? With yeah, I, I think the, the, the thing that we are most proud of uh, is uh, the customers that we've now gotten onboarded who are using the platform mm-hmm. and the benefits that they're seeing, right? So as an example, one of the world's largest airlines came on board as a customer last week. Um, they have about 20 million lines of code, and they were able to onboard that into our platform in three days. Wow. Right? Uh, that's just unheard of. When we asked them, you know, they were using another code analysis solution mm. in the past. And when we asked them how long it took them, uh, you know, the usual rule of thumb for that many lines of code and that many applications is about three months. Mm. So what historically got done in three months, we are now doing in three days. Right? So you've relatively got a time machine for onboarding then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, the faster and I should say there are at least 40, 50 engineers out of that team who are mm. already onboarded into shift lab. They're creating accounts on their own. They're shifting their own applications, mm-hmm. seeing the results. And so the very discussion that we were having earlier as to how do we insert code analysis into Mm. the developer workflow, right? That is becoming real. Mm. Um, I often, I mean, before you walked into the room, there was a customer here, Mm. right? And this is often something that we hear in that particular customer's case, the ratio of developers to application security is 400 is to one. One application security for every 400 developers. And that's the norm. We usually see anywhere between, you know, 80 developers to an application, one application security uh, person in the most security conscious organizations. Mm -hmm. And then it goes all the way to like even 400, 500 developers per application security. And that's a big beat. Exactly. And so regardless of how we think about this problem, if we continue to ask, regardless of how good a solution is, if we continue Mm -hmm. to ask that one application security person to manage to mm. monitor the work, the development work by 100 developers, it's an impossible equation, mm. right? And so we have to find a way um, to leverage the developers um, to do core analysis. Mm. And uh, if we stay with sort of that vision, that goal, then some of the requirements of the product just sort of get you know obvious, right? Mm. It needs to be fast, it needs to be accurate, Mm. It needs to be a workflow that developers um, like to use, and it causes minimal friction for them. Because mm. that's always been the issue with security: is you can be a su- really secure, right. but you can't actually get anything done. That's right, exactly. right? Because it's you know it it doesn't allow you to actually operate in the way that you need to. So that that's good. So from your perspective, um, obviously this is you know one of your early accolades. I'm sure there'll be many more to come. Thanks. What would you what would you sort of say to others? What would be your view on, you know, getting involved with things like this? Yeah. Um, I mean, of course, uh, 
you know, to your listeners who are trying to solve the application security challenge, I invite mm. them to try out ShiftLab. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we became, I think, the first company that is now offering this as a self-serve. Mm-hmm. So because, again, you repeat, we are appealing to developers, and developers usually don't type, like to talk to marketing mm. or sales folks, right? Mm. They're very technical. They're very hands-on, and so mm. they want to just try out the product on their own. Mm. and see if it meets their needs. And so that is now possible with, you know, you can, your listeners can go to shiftleft.io mm-hmm. and just try it out on their own. Mm. So that's the first step. Um, you know, the second is those of uh, those listeners in your audience who are less sort of part of the organization, but are developers who want to contribute mm. to the improvement of security. Uh, we have various open source projects, um, right? So we, we've taken the schema um, the specification of our intellectual property, the code property graph, mm-hmm. and we've open sourced it, nice. uh, which allows anyone out there who wants to leverage this um, specification to convert a programming language to this specification so that they can use our tool, uh, you know, which is also, you know, one of the versions is also open source, right? Mm-hmm. Um, to analyze their own code, right? Mm. So that that is sort of meaningful contribution that mm. one could make uh, to the community at large. Mm. Well, I think that's always a nice thing. I do see a lot of the startup community where they'll be embracing both. So Correct. you'll have an open source sort of initiative, um, and be, people be very passionate about that as well as obviously the commercial arm. Too. Indeed, indeed. I think you have to create a balance uh, mm. between the two. Yes. Right. Um, and, and from your perspective, you know, as an entrepreneur, do you see, you know, what kind of value do you see as being, you know, named as a tech trailblazer in the security space for for the eighth edition? I mean, we've been going for a little while. You've got some wonderful predecessors. I was talking about Zero Fox, who I spoke to Evan Blair yesterday right. and, you know, other great names. Um Zscaler and, and other guys who've gone on to, to great things. So right. hopefully over the next couple of years, maybe we'll sit down again and you can talk to me more about the the journey so far. Um, and, um, you know, what's next? Is there anything that you can tell us about that's coming down the pipe? I mean, you've undoubtedly been talking to the, me- to the media over RSA and may well have made some announcements. Yeah, so first of all, it's a great, great honor. Uh, we're very proud to receive the award that we have. Um, I th- like you said, the company that we are in makes us even prouder with companies like Zero Fox and Zscaler. I think the way that you select the winners, which is sort of through a polling mechanism, right? Mm-hmm. Um, as well as the judges, right? Yeah. As, as do the judges. So that's very important also for us. Um, and in terms of sort of what's in uh, what's going sort of what is uh, in the future for us, I think short term we are very focused now that we've developed the platform to get as many customers onboarded as possible. Mm-hmm. Right. So the, there is a lot of focus now on making the self serve platform as easy for developers to use. Right. Mm. Um, because the 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 key to a success of this strategy lies in developers. Um, just trying the product out on their own, mm. um, providing us feedback when something is not good and can be improved, right? And using the product when they feel that they are satisfied, the product meets their needs, right? Um, so that's one. And I think the next big focus that we have is um, historically code analysis has been very focused on technical vulnerabilities, mm. right? Uh, while they are important, increasingly the hackers are leveraging what are called business logic flaws, in the application to exploit them. Oh, right? Okay, so finding a pathway in that way. Exactly. And um, um, you, again, I believe we are the only solution that can detect uh, business logic flaws in source code. And uh, so that is an area that we are very focused on is mm-hmm. how do we create more and more use cases mm-hmm. where customers can use our product to identify business logic flaws. Yeah. Right? Uh, because today, the only way that gets done is either through pen testing at the 11th hour or through manual mm. code reviews, neither of which really scale. Mm. And it's not a either or, right? I mean, one would probably still need to use pen testing. But, you know, more and more uh, business logic flaws that we can identify and detect, again, at the pull request, uh, more efficient uh, uh, an organization becomes. Less 
uh, expensive security becomes uh, because you know as soon as the change is being made by a developer, you're highlighting some of the things that could be wrong. And you know, I'll just give you a couple of examples because business logic can be sort of very broad term. Mm. Um, so you know, one good example is as customers are rapidly moving into the cloud, developers uh, perhaps sometimes make mistakes and hard code credentials in the source code or secrets mm. in the code, code uh, source code. Excuse me. And uh, secrets, when leaked inappropriately, can cause massive damage uh, to an organization. So how do we find those? Mm. Um, how do we find backdoors in a source code? Um, some third-party developer, some disgruntled developer writes a backdoor so that he can log in at a subsequent time in the future and just get root access. Finding those things is not possible with legacy code analysis solutions. Mm. And that is what we are bringing to the table also. Mm. Well, you've got to beat them at their own game, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. And we'll continue to move the uh, security conversation forward. Mm. Um, I, you know, some some people in the industry discuss, you know, how we have DevOps done, mm. DevOps mm -hmm. as a culture, as a way of developing and deploying software, but security is being left behind, mm. right? And uh, if we are going to get better at uh, developing software, secure so that inherently they, we create more trust with our customers. Mm. We have to find a way to insert security into this highly agile um, DevOps, CI, CD, whatever you want to call it, pipeline. Mm. And that's what that's what our vision is. Wonderful. And obviously, you know, you've, this is a venture for you um, in the entrepreneurial world as well from, you know, been slightly more corporate previously you gradually gradually moved into startup world yeah. what's your advice you know having done this for a period of time and obviously making some really great progress what's your advice to others who are on on this journey yeah first of all um, i'm humbled by the very question yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i mean i would say for those of your listeners who think about starting a company follow your passion mm -hmm. um some you know many uh, some entrepreneurs approach me and say I'm wanting wanting to start a company but I don't have an idea mm. and I think that's the wrong way of thinking about it. You have to become passionate about a problem that you want to solve, mm. right? As opposed to how to solve it first. And because um, once you uh, get passionate about a particular problem that you want to solve, and you spend enough time, you will find either a solution to the entire problem or a solution to a part of the problem. Uh, and once you've achieved that, you know, everything else from that point onwards gets easier. Mm. Um, you're committed. Uh, you, you're not in this for money alone. Um, you identified a problem uh, that you're very passionate about solving. Mm. Um, and that will hold you in good stead uh, during both difficult uh, and good times. Mm. Because that is the very nature of a startup. It's a seesaw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, roller coaster. I yes, think. it's probably the better way. <laughs> Buckle <to say> up, <laughs> enjoy the ride. Yes. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Wish you continued success at the show, and thank you for spending time with me and telling me more about what you're doing. And, and, and hopefully, we'll get to hear more about that over the coming years. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Uh, it's great to meet you. Thank Likewise. you for taking the time. You're welcome. Bye. -bye.